All right, folks, so today we're taking a look at the Sega Naomi 2 arcade board, and more specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the system's CPU and case fans. Like most hardware cooling solutions, the fans in the Naomi 2 are prone to picking up dust and dirt, and over time, begin to degrade, resulting in excessive noise. Here's my Naomi 2, and this is what it sounds like. As you can tell, the cooling fans have definitely seen better days. So let's take a look at the process of replacing those fans and quietening the system down a little. The first thing we're going to need is a new set of fans. The Naomi 2 has three fans, one case fan and two CPU fans. The OEM Naomi 2 case fan is in NIDEC TA225DC H34587. And we'll be replacing that with a GDS Time 60mm by 15mm 12 volt brushless fan. I picked this one up on eBay for around about 10 bucks. The OEM SEPA HFB44B05A CPU fans are a little bit more specialized. Direct replacements are available, but they're pretty pricey. So as an alternative, we're going to be using two Sunon KD0504PFB 40mm by 10mm 5V fans. You can grab these fans from a couple of different places online for around about $8 a piece. Right, so now we've got the new fans, let's get these installed. So here's the Naomi 2, and the first thing we're going to do is remove the case. Flipping the system over, there are eight screws that need to be removed, three on the left-hand side of the case, three in the center, and two on the right-hand side. And these can be removed with a standard Phillips screwdriver. Pretty straightforward. Once the screws are removed, we're going to flip the system back over and pull up on the top of the shell to remove it. The top of the shell might be a little bit tight, but just work around the edges until it comes apart. Now we've got the top of the shell off, we can see the main Naomi 2 motherboard. On the bottom right of the motherboard, we can see the two CPU fans that we're going to be replacing. The fans are attached directly to heat sinks by two screws and are connected to the motherboard with a JST 3 pin connector. Remove the two screws and unplug the JST connector to remove the fan. Directly underneath the fan you'll see a mounting plate, and we're going to remount those in a few minutes to attach the new fans to, so just put that aside. You'll notice some hot glue holding the fan wires in place, just pick that glue off carefully to release the cable. Now we've got the fan removed, let's take a quick look at it. You'll see that this is a low profile countersunk fan, so the replacement fan is definitely going to sit a little bit differently on top of the heatsink, and you'll also see that this is a three wire setup, which includes a yellow sense wire. Now, as I just mentioned, since the CPU fans are going to mount slightly differently, now would probably be a good time to do a quick test fit. So we'll just sit the fan in place for a second and drop the top shell back on. Now that we've confirmed the new fans will fit inside the case when mounted, we can go ahead and repeat the process to remove the second fan. Once both the CPU fans have been removed, it's time to remove the case fan. You'll see that the case fan's located on the right hand side of the shell, just attached to a mounting bracket and also a JST connector on the filter board to the left. To remove the case fan, simply pull up on the fan to remove the mounting bracket and then unplug the JST connector from the filter board. Once the JST connector has been unplugged, pull up easily on both the filter board and the motherboard to remove it from the case. With the motherboard removed, we can see the fan case is being held in place with clips. Simply unbend those clips to release the cable and remove the fan. Once we've got the fan removed, we can put the shell to one side and start preparing the new fans for installation. Starting with the case fan, we're simply going to splice the wiring and the JST connector from the original fan onto the wires of the new fan. For this, you'll just need access to a soldering iron. First, we're going to snip the wires on both the original and replacement fans, leaving a majority of the original fan wire in place. Once the wires are clipped, we can get rid of the original fan and the wires from the replacement fan. Then just simply strip each of the wires and tin using the soldering iron. Just to make this a little bit of a cleaner install, I'm going to be using some heat shrink tubing, so we're just going to need to slide that over the wires in preparation for soldering them together. 
If you want to use electrical tape on the solder connections, that'll work too. Next, twist the end of the corresponding wires together and solder. Obviously red to red and black to black. Once the wires are soldered together, slide the heat shrink over the solder point and heat with the heat gun. And the new case fan is ready to install. Reinstallation of the case fan is incredibly straightforward. Simply place the mounting bracket on the new fan and slide the assembly back into place. Then start routing the wires back through the metal clips, bending them back to their original position. The wire will be longer than needed, so make sure you leave one of the clips a little loose so you can make adjustments when the motherboard is back in place. And there we go. The new fan is in place and looks exactly as it should. Next, let's prepare the CPU fans. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'll be replacing the CPU fans with the Sonon KD0504 PFB 40mm by 10mm 5V fans. Out of the box, these fans only have two wires, positive and negative, but they do have an open solder pad for a third sense wire, which we're going to use in just a moment. So we're going to start off by desoldering the original wires from the replacement fans, just by heating the solder points on the pads and pulling the wires away. This is a little fiddly and you don't have a lot of space to work in, but just take your time and the wires should desolder without too much trouble. Once that's done, you can see all three pads are now open. I did manage to catch the plastic case in a little due to the small space that's available to work in, but it shouldn't cause any issues. Now the new fans are prepared, we can attach the wires from the original CPU fans. There's no way to desolder the wires from the original CPU fans, so just clip those wires, strip back a small length, and they'll be ready to be soldered onto the new fans. Solder each of the three wires to the pads on the new fan, making sure that positive and negative wires are in the right positions. You can reference the second CPU fan just to make sure. The yellow sense wire will obviously be soldered in the remaining open pad. So here's a closer look at one of the new fans with the original fan wires attached. Ignoring the terrible soldering skills, you'll see the order the wires go in, positive, negative, and sense. Repeat this process on the second CPU fan, and we're ready for installation. Since we've already installed the new case fan into the case, the only thing that's required is to replace the motherboard assembly and plug in the JST connector. Incredibly straightforward. The installation of the CPU fans is just as easy, but as I mentioned earlier, the process is just slightly different from the OEM fans. So there are two options to mount the new CPU fans. The screw holes in the new fans do match with the holes on the mounting brackets and the heat sinks. So you can screw mount the new fans if you'd like. You just need to grab a set of slightly longer screws. The second option is to grab the glue gun and simply use a couple of dabs of glue to hold them in place. And this is what I'm going to be doing today since I don't have any longer screws on hand. So the first thing I'm going to do is just drop one of the fans in place just to make sure that the orientation is correct for the connector and the wires. And that all looks good, so I'm just going to grab the glue gun, and I'm just going to put a dab of glue in the corners opposite to the screws. Then it's just a case of dropping the fan in place, putting a little bit of pressure on the fan, and wait for a second or two for the glue to set. Once the glue sets, we just need to connect the JST connector, and repeat the process for the second CPU fan, and all the hard work is done. Taking a look at the final installation, you can see that everything looks nice and clean, and other than the relative size of the new CPU fans, everything looks like it was meant to be there. So we're going to wrap all of this up just by replacing the top of the Naomi 2 shell, and then we'll do a quick comparison to see if replacing those fans has made any kind of improvement. Here's what the Naomi 2 sounded like with the original fans in place. And here's what the Naomi 2 sounds like now, with the new fans installed. I think you'll agree, that's a pretty big improvement. So that's the quick guide on how to replace the CPU and case fans on the Sega Naomi 2 arcade board. The whole process was pretty straightforward, even for someone like me with pretty questionable soldering skills, and I'm really happy with the results. I hope you found the video helpful, if you have, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing. It's really helping the channel grow. And also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.